Greetings. Greetings, greetings, greetings. And it's another terrific Thursday, and we're back here again. Running a little late. As you know, this is the end of college semesters, and I am a college professor, and I have um, a lot of papers to read and review and grade, and so I've been immersed in the computer doing that. So I'm really kind of stealing away a little bit of time to share stories with you, and I'm glad that I'm able to do that. It gives me a break, actually, and a wonderful time to focus on something that I really love, which are children's stories. So let's begin. Welcome to Storytime with Dr. Helen Tinsley. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. In the stories that I read every day. Welcome to Storytime with Dr. Helen Tinsley. Hi, Aunt Carol. So I have exhausted all of the children's books that I have, and now I'm actually ordering books. So I had this book many, many years ago. I probably gave it to one of my daughter or one of my grandchildren. But this is a classic um, anthology of uh, black folk tales, and it's called The People Could Fly. <clears throat> it won many awards. The, Excuse me, American Black Folk Tales told by Virginia Hamilton, il illustrated by Leo and Diane Gillen, which have been uh, Caldecott Honor Award winners. So, today we're going to read a story every day from The People Could Fly. And there's very few illustrations, so I want you to see the front and back cover. The people could fly. So put on your imagination. So the, the words form the images in your mind. He lion, burr bear, and burr rabbit, and other animal tales. So this story is he lion, burr bear, and burr rabbit. Say that he lion would get up each and every morning Stretch and walk around, he'd roar, me and myself, me and myself, like that. Scare all the little animals so they were afraid to come outside in the sunshine, afraid to go hunting or fishing or whatever the little animals wanted to do. What we gonna do about it, they asked one another. Squirrel leaping from branch to branch, just scared. Possum playing dead, couldn't hardly move. He lying just went on sticking out his chest and roaring, me and myself, me and myself. The little animals held a sit-down talk, and one by one, and two by two, and all by all, they decided to go see Burr Bear and Burr Rabbit. For they know that Burr Bear, Burr Bear been around, and Burr Rabbit say he been too. So they went to Burr Rabbit and Burr Bear and said, "We have come. Tr we have some trouble. Oh, he lying, him scaring everybody, roaring every morning and all day. Me and myself, me and myself, like that." Why he lying want to do that, Burr, 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 it's a tongue twister. Why he lying want to do that, Burr Bear said. Is that all he lying have to say, Burr Rabbit asked. We don't know why, but that's all he lying can tell us. And we didn't ask him to tell us that, said the little animals. And he, him scaring the children with it, and we wish he'd stop. Well, I'll go see him, talk to him. I've known he lying a long kind of time, Burr Bear said. I'll go with you, said Burr Rabbit. I've known he lying most long as you. That bear and that rabbit went off through the forest. They kept hearing something. Mumble, mumble. Couldn't make it out. They got farther in the forest. They heard it plain now. Me and myself. Me and myself. Well, 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 said Burr Bear. He wasn't scared. He been around the whole forest, seen a lot. My, 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 said Burr Rabbit. He's seen enough to know not to be afraid of an old he lion. Now, old he lions could be dangerous, but you had to know how to handle them. The burr and the rabbit climbed up 
and up the cliff. They climbed up and up the cliff where he lion had his lair. They found him, kept their distance. He watching them and they watching him, everybody acting cordial. He'd tell you scaring everybody, all the little animals which are roaring all the time, Burr Rabbit said. I roars when I pleases, he lion said. Well, Mike, could you leave off the noise first thing in the morning so the little animals can get what they want to eat and drink, asked Burr Bear. Listen, said he lion, then he roared, me and myself, me and myself. Nobody tell me what to do, he said. I'm the king of the forest, me and myself. But then let me tell you something, Burr Rabbit said, for I've seen man, and I know him the real king of the forest. He lion was quiet a while. He looked straight through that scrawny little rabbit like he was nothing at all. He looked at Burr Bear and figured he talked to him. You bear, you been around, he lion said. That's true, said old Burr Bear. I've been about everywhere. I've been around the fo whole forest. Then you must know something, he lion said. I know lots, said Burr Bear, slow and quick like. Tell me what you know about man, he lion said. He think him the king of the forest. Well, now I'll tell you, said Burr Bear. I've been around, but I haven't ever come across man that I know of. Couldn't tell you nothing about him. So he and Lion had to turn back to Bear Rabbit. He didn't want to, but he had to. So what, he said to that little scrawny hare. Well, you got to come down from there if you want to see man, Bear Rabbit said. Come down from there and I'll show you him. He Lion thought a minute, an hour, and a whole day. Then the next day he came on down. He roared just once, me and myself, me and myself. Now he said, come show me man. So they set out. He lion, Burr Bear, and Burr Rabbit. They go along and they go along, ranging the forest. Pretty soon they come to a clearing, and playing in it, playing in it, is a little fellow about nine years old. Is that their man? asked He Lion. Why no, that one is called Wilby, but it sure is not man, said Burr Rabbit. So they went along and they went along. Pretty soon they came upon a shaken a shade tree. And sleeping under it, an old, olden fella, about 90 years olden. There must lie man, spoke he lion. I knew him wasn't going to be much. That's not man, said Burr Rabbit. That fellow is was, was once. Was once. You'll know it when you see man. So they went along. He lion is getting tired of strolling, so he roars. Me and myself, me and myself. Upsets Bear so that Bear doubles over and runs and climbs the tree. Come down from there, Bear Rabbit, telling him. So after a while, Bear comes down. He keeps his distance from He Lion anyhow. And they set out some more, going along quiet and slow. In a little while, they come to a road. And coming on way down the road, Burr Rabbit sees Man coming. Man about 21 years old, big and strong with a big gun over his shoulder. There! Burr Rabbit says, see there, he lying, that, there's man. You better go meet him. I will, said he lying. <coughs> Excuse me. And he sticks out his chest and he roars, me and myself, me and myself. <coughs> All the way to man, he's roaring proud, me and myself, me and myself. Come on, Burr Bear, let's go, Burr Rabbit said. For what? Burr, Rabbit, Burr Bear wants to know. You better come on. And Burr Rabbit takes a hold of Burr Bear and half drags him to a thicket. And there he making the bear hide with him. For here comes man. Excuse me. <coughs> My throat is irritated. Excuse me. And here comes man. <clears throat> he sees old lion real good now. He drops to one knee and he takes aim with his big gun. Oh, he lying is roaring his head off. Me and myself, me and myself. The big gun goes off. Paloom! He lying falls back hard on his tail. The gun, go, gun goes off again. Paloom! He lying is flying through the air. He lands in the thicket. Well, did you see man, asked Burr Bear. I seen him, said he lying. Man spoken to me unkind and got a great long stick him keeping on his shoulder. 
That man taking that stick down and him speaking real mean. Thundering at me and lightning coming from that stick awful bad. Made me sick. I had to run around. And man pointing that stick again and thundering at me some more. So I come in here because it seemed like him throws some stickers at me each time it thundered too. So you've met man. And you know exactly what kind of him is, said Burr Rabbit. I surely do know that, he lion said back. After a while, after he lion met man, things were better in the forest. Burr Bear knew what man looked like so he could keep out of his way. That rabbit always did know how to keep out of man's way. The little animals could go out in the morning because he lion was more peaceful. He didn't walk around roaring at the top of his voice all the time. And when he lion did lift that voice of his, it was like, me and myself, me and myself, me and man. I'm sorry, me and myself and man, me and myself and man, me and myself and man, like that. And wasn't too loud either. Now, just to give you a little background on animal tales. Animal tales are the most widely known black folk tales. Because of the menial labor slaves were made to do, they observed and came to know many kinds of animals throughout their daily lives. They developed a keen interest in these lowly creatures. Because they had so little knowledge about the fauna or the greenery they found here, they made up tales that to some extent explained and fit their observations of animal behavior. Furthermore, the tales satisfied the slaves' need to explain symbolically and secretly the ruling behavior of the slave owners in relation to themselves. As time passed, the tales were told more for entertainment and instruction. He lion, bur bear, and bur rabbit is a typical tale of an animal, whether it is a wolf, lion, bear, rabbit, goat, or tiger that learns to experience the fear of man. It is the rabbit that shows man to the lion, and the rabbit representing the slave in the animal tales knows from experience to fear man. The tale ranges throughout North and South America, Europe, and Africa. So that's the first story in the book, and that was He Lion, Burr Bear, and Burr Rabbit. The people could fly. So we're going to be reading stories from this um, until we finish, and then I go on to the next anthology. So I hope you enjoyed the story. Yes, Bully No More. He walked around, me and myself, me and myself. And he, then he said, me, myself, and man. He became very meek. <laughs> any rate, I hope you enjoyed the story. Have a great day. Be well. And I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Thank you for joining in on Carol and Stephanie and Catherine. Appreciate your ongoing uh, support. Have a good day. Peace.